Well, they've been lying to you because the Hayabusa is not the fire-breathing, supercar-slaying sport bike that it claims to be. In fact, it's even better. And I'm gonna tell you guys everything you need to know about the Hayabusa and all the cool things it can do, including wheelie control. The Suzuki Hayabusa is one of the most iconic looking and most customized motorcycle of all time, with the exclusion of the Harley Davidson, of course, which is why everyone can spot the Hayabusa. First of all, it's ginormous. It's the biggest sport bike out there. And second of all, it's got huge fairings. It's got this big, ginormous beak of a fender. The Hayabusa also normally has a big horn back here. But the Hayabusa is not just known for being big, it's also known for being incredibly fast. When it came out in 1999, it beat out the ZX-11 and the Honda Blackbird for being the world's fastest production motorcycle ever. And even the name Hayabusa was a direct attack towards the Honda Blackbird because the Hayabusa is this Japanese bird that is known to swoop super fast at speeds up to 200 miles an hour and kill blackbirds, which all this most likely was just to annoy the guys at Honda Corporate. Now, rumor has it that the first year, the 1999 Hayabusa was the fastest Hayabusa ever because they didn't abide by the gentleman's agreement of 186 miles per hour and that the first gen Busa could do even more than that. That's just a rumor. I've never been able to confirm that but that's what people say. So the big misconception about the Hayabusa is that it's just for racing and that it's just a larger version of a sport bike. And in a way that's true, because of the ergonomics of the bike and the way the clip-on handlebars are mounted and how comfortable the bike is to ride, many riders would actually consider this just as much a sport touring as it is a super sport. And I would have to agree that it's the perfect combination of the two. This is the third generation. So first generation went from 1999 to 2007. Second generation went from 2008 to 2020. There's kind of a gap year and then bam, the third generation. So you can expect that this thing's probably gonna be out for the next decade, which means there's gonna be tons of awesome aftermarket parts for which, but to be honest, I don't know if it needs any of those other aftermarket stuff because the way they built it was so perfect and you're, you're gonna see it in a little bit. Now the bike has 550 new or completely redesigned parts on it, which most of it are just little, you know, body panels and kind of not really super significant things, but the really exciting things are from its SIRS system, Suzuki Intelligent Ride System. So this is a ride-by-wire Bosch six-axis inertia measurement device, which gives it the ability to have some of the best traction control, riders modes, engine power modes, launch control, cruise control, cornering ABS, and adjustable speed limits. Now what that means is that it can tell, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six. So it can tell in any position that the bike is in to know what it can do. So here's an example. Let's say you're on a corner. It knows you're really, really far over and you get on the brake. It's gonna be able to adjust all those systems so that you don't crash and burn. It also comes with three different factory settings, A, B, and C. A being pretty much everything's deactivated except for a little bit of traction control and a little bit of stability control. And it comes with three fully adjustable, completely customizable user settings, which gives you the ability to change all the different features of it. The traction control, you can change from a one to 10 scale. It's actually, it's actually pretty, uh, pretty cool. It also has one of the best drag coefficients ever put on a production motorcycle. And another full-blown race feature is its bi-directional quick shift. So basically what this bike did was they took all the features that the aftermarket would have came and, and added to to make it faster and make it better and more of a race bike, and they just made it like that stock, which is gonna pretty awesome. Now, even though this is one of the most powerful motorcycles money can buy, it's actually a really manageable bike, depending on which setting you're on. So with the click of a button, it can go from a bike that someone with very little experience can ride and still be safe, or a straight up monster. But even the most experienced riders love to ride. Let's do the words of wisdom. This is Matthew 633, but seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given unto you. Amen. Oh, this change the mode. Suzuki put a feature on this bike that is very, very cool, but they kind of hit it. That is launch control. There's no buttons that actually say launch control, and according to the internet, there's nothing about it on the user manual, which I, I wouldn't know because I don't read user manuals, but I did find out how to use it. All right, so here's what you do. When you're stopped, you grab the start button. No, you have to be, okay. Oh, it actually says launch control right there. That's pretty cool. 
So when you're stopped, you grab the start button right there. Bam, there's the launch control. Now it's two bars. Let's put it on one bar. Now one bar means I can, I can hold the throttle as hard as I can, and it's just gonna sit there at 4,000 RPMs, and then I just, I assume I just dump the clutch. I don't know how much the regulations I gotta do for that. All right, so all you do is you stop, hold the start button down, launch control, and then now it won't rev past, I can peg it, and it won't go past 4,000 RPMs. Okay, that's what that does. I obviously need more than that. Launch control again. Let's bump it up to 8,000 RPMs. No, 6,000 RPMs. There we This is the power plant of the new bike. Very similar to the old one, a 1340cc motor, making 187 horsepower and 110 foot-pounds of torque. And even though the bike weighs in at a whopping 582 pounds, compared that to a sport bike, a 600 sport bike that weighs like 420 pounds, it still has a power to weight ratio of a 3,000 pound car with 1,000 horsepower. So it's, it's pretty impressive. Now, with, and with all this new tech on this bike, it's incredibly fast, even fast enough to put supercars in their place. Just like our boys from across the pond with the YouTube channel Carwow did, they raced this thing up against an Adventador, smoked it. That's an all wheel drive supercar, and this did all that stuff with this much contact patch on the ground. And that's pretty incredible. The Hayabusa engine is such an amazing motor that there's tuners and racers out there who have gotten over 700 horsepower out of these things. You know, they put a turbo on it and stuff. It's, it, it's mind blowing what that little 1340cc uh, motor can do. Now I know what all you guys are thinking. You're thinking, Sean, how do you keep that Hayabusa so clean? Well, actually it's not that clean. It's really, really dusty. But the best way to keep your bikes looking nice, M1 Moto Fast Detailer. Spray it on every possible surface. Wipe it down. You can spray it on chrome, spray it on paint, spray it on whatever. It looks amazing. There's no streaks. Available now at bikesandbeardsgear.com and amazon.com. Big one. 